Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you as always for tuning in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Dynamo Reader. And today folks, we are doing another card combination exercise. We're gonna pull two cards, interpret the combination, and then draw an additional card to interpret the triplets. Now, if you're new here, just a reminder about what Lunar Mall fundamentals are. And the key to reading Lunar Mall is to read them in combination, to read the cards in combination. There's only 36 cards in the deck, and so the way we get the most meaning is by adding meaning from combining the cards. So let's go ahead and draw our combination for this week. Let's see what we get. I'm gonna draw them randomly, no plans here. And I'll just put this a little bit aside. Um, the clover, the beautiful clover, and the dog. Okay, well, this is a pretty straightforward combination for those of you who've been uh, practicing Lenormo even just a little bit. So the clover is one of those cards that is really obvious in its meaning uh, because it's a, a symbol that we immediately associate with. It's all about luck and good fortune. Some Lenormand authors interpret the clover as a bit of luck, like uh, luck with small things, um, as opposed to luck with big things. Now, I personally don't read the clover in this way. I don't feel it's necessary. I'm not sure why it adds value. Um, I think it's just luck, and then the surrounding cards or the topic at hand will guide the extent of the luck and what the luck is about. So that's how I feel about the clover and this very peculiar, what I feel is peculiar, uh, a particular way of interpreting the clover. Now the dog is the card of friends and friendships. Um, it's associated with everything we would associate with a dog, like loyalty, commitment, friendship, support, all of these are associated with the dog. Obviously, it can represent a person, um, and uh, it can also indicate anyone in our peer group. So it's associated with colleagues, with siblings, um, you know, people in our age group, um, and it can also represent, in specific contexts, it can represent a customer, for example, uh, it can represent an associate of sorts, you know, someone supportive, someone we're working with who supports us in any area of our life. I also take it to represent siblings, and sometimes it can represent kids, your children, especially when they're older. So the child, uh, the child card would be babies and toddlers, and then the dog would be older kids, so teenagers, um, you know, maybe a bit older young adults, um, and so on. So when we have the clover and dog together, it is obviously very, very supportive for a positive friendship. This is someone we can trust, someone who brings us luck, who brings us support. And anyway, we read the cards in the order, it doesn't matter at all. Um, this is someone who just brings us luck, who comes at the right time probably. Um, and I say that because the clover, when it comes to timing, is unpredictable. It's a bit like at the right time, just when you need it. So it doesn't really specify the time uh, or the timeline, but it does suggest that luck comes when we need it. And so with the dog here, we have this friend uh, or this person who comes uh, just in time for us to support us in whatever is at hand. Obviously, two cards are not always telling in Lenormand. We often need three, four, and longer lines to come up with a story. Let's move on to our first triplet. Just gonna draw randomly here. The fish, awesome. So the fish is the card of money. And um, so this would qualify the dog. And we said that they're right next to each other here. I feel this can really be good for a customer. You could get a really good paying customer or we make money through a person. It can also represent the job in terms of, you know, the money representing income. And with the dog here, it's possible that we get a job offer. Um, it's also possible that there is uh, a new colleague that supports, maybe not necessarily new, but a colleague who supports with some financial goals. Um, the dog and fish can also represent someone we work with for our money and finances. So for example, you know, the person we always go to at the bank, our agent, uh, you know, whom we trust, possibly our accountant. Though typically for these specific roles, I prefer the fox. 
Uh, the fox is the card of the employee. It is someone disciplined, committed, and things like that. Yes, a bit tricky, but the fox can also represent these people we work with, um, you know, like these support agents, the teller at the bank, our accountant, and people like that. Still, the dog is uh, a good uh, option for this as well, so it can apply uh, depending on the context. Now, if we had the fish and dog next to each other, I don't think that changes much. If we had the clover in the middle, again, I don't feel this changes much. Um, maybe here there is the possibility of spending money on someone. In this case, the clover is supportive. It might suggest that we're good to do that. Uh, but again, I don't feel that it, it really changes much here. If we had uh, the dog at the beginning and then the clover in the middle, I think the idea is pretty much the same uh, thing here. Uh, there is good money coming through and it could come through in a number of ways. Um, either this is a customer or this is a job or this is a colleague or someone who helps uh, with these financial affairs. So I think that's pretty straightforward with the fish, the fish being the card of money and the clover bringing out uh, positive aspects in these ways. Let's draw another card, see what we get here. The flowers. So this is a beautiful card of all around optimism. Uh, it's a bit like the clover. It really adds to the power of the clover. The flowers is about optimism, abundance. It's also associated with celebration and fun. Um, it's very lighthearted in that sense. It's also associated with spring and the idea of a return. And so when we see it with the dog, it's possible that someone had been out of touch or maybe you don't know what's going on with this person and then you hear back from them. So the idea of the flowers is that things come back into play. Uh, it's a really good card for forgiveness, for letting go and uh, for coming back on the same page with a person after a fallout. It really is a card of healing and um, you know that sense of reassurance that comes from um, you know, being being aware of what the other person's intentions were, especially in a positive sense. And with the clover here, there is, um, you know, it really adds to this. So these two cards are positive, positive, super positive, very bright, very supportive. And in the context of the dog here, it really re-emphasized the idea that this is someone uh, we get along with, who is supportive, who has our best interests at heart, and also someone who brings us luck, possibly someone who helps us achieve some goals. And again here, because the cards are so positive here, I don't think it makes a difference what is the order of the cards specifically, because the clover and flowers are almost the same meaning in this context. So a very bright combination, any way we look at the cards, just the added refinement here or the added specific interpretation, I would say, is the idea of return and forgiveness that come through uh, the flowers. So that is distinct from the clover. The clover is not really about forgiveness and the idea of return, but the flowers is. So this is the extra meaning that the flowers brings to the table in this triplet, in this combination. Let's move on to a third triplet. And I think these are gonna be pretty straightforward because of the clover and dog being a really clear meaning here. Oh, that's another very, very bright card. Uh, so just like the flowers, the star can point to healing. Uh, this is an all around success combination in this uh, relationship with the dog. At this point, with the, something as powerful as the star, uh, this is someone who can help us achieve our goals, land a wish. Um, we can be after a certain goal and this person helps us materialize the goal. And we see that with the star, that is very, very possible. The star is also another one of those super bright cards like the clover and the flowers. So wish fulfillment, support, and all good things that come through this person um, is very, very likely. Okay, so again, I don't feel this is adding anything very different from the flowers because the star also has a healing quality. It maybe has um, the specific interpretation of wish fulfillment on a bigger scale uh, than the flowers, also, although the flowers is pretty good with wish fulfillment as well. The star is a lot more powerful in that sense. So really that a major achievement and a big goal achieved is very possible through the star, especially with the clover nearby. And the idea of the dog is that this is someone who enables us to do this. So very straightforward triplet. I'm gonna move on. Let's look for some cards um, that might be not so obvious, not so clearly positive the road okay that is an interesting card uh, in this context of this 
pair here, the dog and clover. The road is a card of change, and it often has to do with partings when it comes to a relationship. And the reason is because the road, when it comes to commitments and people, it's a bit flaky. It's the queen of diamonds, and the characteristics of the queen of diamonds in light of the symbol of the road is that sense of flakiness, someone who's not really settled. So it doesn't tend to support committed long-term relationships uh, like another card, let's say the anchor or the tree. The road is changing in that sense. Now, when we have the road at this side, of the triplet. We have the dog, clover, and road. I think the idea of a parting is emphasized. But the thing about the clover, especially in the center of the line here, is that it's a good thing. It's a good thing to take time out, to move away, and possibly to take a trip. It is possible that you go somewhere with this person. I mean, the clover is very positive in this sense. But I feel that because the road is on the right-hand side here, I think it makes more sense that the idea of letting go, giving space, and maybe going separate ways that is actually the good thing to do, especially if the context or the question is about a situation um, that's a bit tricky with a person. It's okay to let it go and to let things unfold over time. Now, if we had the dog on the right-hand side here, the idea of a return, of coming back, is possible, and it's more possible than when the road is on the right. So I feel that, in this case, the order of the cards is a bit more um, salient here. It's a bit more relevant. Um, still, the clover is lovely. It's an all-around positive card, so it's going to affect the triplet in a very positive way regardless. And with the dog on the right-hand side, I do feel the idea of meeting this person, possibly going to see them, traveling to see them, or traveling together is highlighted here. And I think with the clover in the middle, I think it doesn't make a difference. The idea is that the dog is on the right-hand side. And this is similar to what we read initially. The idea, we had this, I think. Um, the idea is that it's okay to let go. It's okay for uh, you know people to take their time in this relationship, and it, it does bring good things. The clover can sometimes bring blessings in disguise. If there is a challenging situation, um, or the, the cards are challenging around the clover, it can mean that the clover brings a blessing in disguise. So at this point, things are tough and maybe not well understood, but the clover suggests that there's a good reason for that and in time it will show through. So that could be an element that the clover brings to the dog and road combination here. Maybe there's a good reason why you need to take time apart. Maybe there's a good reason why this person is going their own way and you're going your own way, or perhaps that they're going away for some time, or that there's a time apart or some kind of distance that sets between the two of you, or maybe they're just going off on their own. Maybe there's a good reason for that. The idea of the clover is to trust and have faith and to let it go, especially with the road, and to allow things to unfold on their own time. So this can be an interesting way to interpret uh, this triplet with the road. Let's look for more triplets here, see what else we get. Okay, the clover with the rider. So the rider is a helpful card. It can be a bit like the dog in terms of someone supportive, but the specific meaning that comes through the rider is the idea of news and a messenger. And um, the dog and rider could be one and the same person, right? So the dog can be this messenger. And with the clover, we see that there's wonderful news, very good news. Um, the rider is also really good with goals, moving forward, going after things we want. And seeing it here on the right-hand side is very encouraging in terms of momentum. It tells us to move forward, to go ahead, and to get moving. Maybe this dog brings us the green light and we're able to move forward. It brings us the news that helps us move forward. Um, it's very important with this combination to go ahead and to take steps, especially with the rider on the right-hand side. If we had the rider closer to the dog, and I think it won't matter the specific order. The idea is that they're close together, not separated by a third card. I think there is a stronger idea that the dog and the rider are one and the same person and that this dog brings us news. Again, very, very good news. The rider is a, an active card. It's very much about being proactive and taking initiative. Um, so we could be the ones who take steps forward. In terms of a friendship or a relationship, 
it's possible that we're encouraged to um, take a step to reach out to this person, uh, to make friends, to express interest. And this can be in any context. So if this is a colleague, it's about reaching out to them. If this is a friend, it's about reaching out to them. If this is about networking, it's about introducing ourselves and you know taking steps to meet new people. The idea of the writer is that it's really proactive. I think it would be well highlighted when we have the dog on the other side here. It's like we are moving towards this person. We are moving towards this um, the dog here, this whoever they might be, a contact or a colleague or a new friend. And um, the clover is really encouraging. Um, it tells us to go ahead and take that first step, not to worry about what, how we come across. So very good for taking initiative, for being proactive and taking that first step. With the dog, it's a first step towards another person, whoever they may be in this specific context. So an active combination with the rider. Let's move on to maybe two or three more combinations because we've had uh, the flowers and, and star very similar to the clover. So we want more variety here. Let's draw this card, see what we get here. Ooh, the snake, very tricky, excellent. Um, the snake is a very tricky card in relationships. It is the main card associated with dishonesty, even cheating, a third party interfering in the relationship. And the thing about having the dog next to the snake is that it really highlights that it's a person as opposed to a situation or maybe something tricky, you know. Um, the snake really brings out the uh, person element with the dog. The snake itself is the queen of clubs. As you might know from the Pip videos, um, I'll link them in the description box, uh, the queen of clubs is a challenging uh, pip because the clubs in Lenormand are the challenging suit and this is different from the tarot. And so the queen of clubs is associated with the snake. This is a very tricky character, uh, you know, someone who is obviously self-interested, even, um, you know, ill-intentioned is very possible coming through uh, the snake. And when we see it with the dog, it's clear that this is about a person. Being at the beginning of the line, it tells us that we will be able to see through this person's intentions. And it also suggests that we are protected from any harm they might be intending towards us. And it's also possible that the snake has characteristics that we need to adopt in the face of this person. Uh, the snake is a card of silence, of discretion and diplomacy. And with the clover here, it definitely comes to our advantage. It suggests that we need to keep our intentions to ourselves. We shouldn't share much with this person and we should be aware of their intentions. And the clover really comes to our advantage in the sense that we are able to protect ourselves from any um, ill intentions or um, any traps that the dog might be extending to us. Now there is a slight chance that this triplet can mean that we have unnecessary doubts about this person, but I don't think so. I think it would be come it would come through better with the clover closest to the dog. When the snake and dog are close to each other, are right adjacent to each other, I really think that it highlights issues about this person that we need to be aware of and careful about. But with the clover in the middle here, it can mean that the more positive aspects of the clover are what qualify the dog. And the thing about the snake at the outset here suggests that we might change our mind about this person. Maybe we have doubts that we're about to uh, resolve. And so it's no longer a person whom we see as uh, someone who is ill-intentioned or dangerous in that sense. Instead, they turn out to be supportive friends and these are doubts that we resolve. Still, having the snake in the line and at the beginning suggests that we need to be careful with people in general or with this person specifically. Now, if we had the snake at the end and even better with the clover in the middle, I do feel that the idea of the road comes through similar to the road, the idea of moving away, moving away from this person, letting them go and going in our own uh, direction, in our own way. And with the clover here, it is very supportive. Um, it is also a combination that encourages us to take time out, to not speak, you know, to, um, just go our, go our own way, really, just like the road. And there's a good reason for that, as suggested by the clover. I also think that it's possible that um, if we go our own way or we do our own thing, as suggested by the snake, this dog, this friend, or this person here might not be affected by it as much as we thought 
they could be, you know? So it's an encouraging combination um, to help us move forward without worrying about what other people might think. Do you sort of see what I'm saying here? So that's what I think could come through uh, the, the snake. But in general, the clover really helps turn the snake around a little bit. It would have been a very different story if we didn't have the clover, if we had um, less positive cards or more challenging cards, then really the bite and the danger of the snake comes through more clearly. But the clover really helps lift um, you know, the, uh, the negativity of the snake and turn it into a bit of an advantage. You know, it brings out the smart qualities of the snake. So these are my thoughts uh, for the snake. I think I'm up for a couple more combinations here. Triplets, let's draw this card, what we get. Interesting, the coffin. So the coffin is an ending and uh, with it at the right hand side here, I, I feel that this is a relationship that could end. In this sense, it can be similar to the road and snake. And uh, again, with the clover, there's a good reason for that. It's a good idea to do this. It's a good time to do this, or it might happen at the right time. But the thing about the coffin is to allow for time out and space. And it seems to be, um, in general, more final than the change cards like the snake and road. It's more associated with an ending as opposed to time apart or a transition okay so that is key i think the same thing applies with the coffin in the middle but if we had the dog on the right hand side then i feel this is more like the flowers where there's someone who comes back into play because i read from right from left to right and the right is associated with outcomes or the the parts of the story that come later on and so we see there was a time apart here and then the clover and dog suggest that they come back into play. So that is a clear difference with the order of the cards with a card like the coffin. If it were in the middle, I think that is similar. It's like the dog comes through after a time apart, but I feel with the clover in the middle, this idea is stronger. It comes through more strongly. I think with the coffin in the middle, it highlights this idea of a time apart of being away. And again, the clover says that's fine, but you sort of see the refinement here. I think this triplet is uh, is where the order of the cards um, comes through in, in uh, more detail. And it matters whether it's in the middle, at the end or at the beginning. So these are my thoughts uh, with the coffin. I'm gonna wrap up with one more triplet. Let's see this side of the deck. The heart okay well this is uh, a bit like um, a bit like the other cards um, the heart is interesting when it comes with the dog it points to a specific combination in my personal dic dictionary and I inherit this meaning from Titania's approach as well the dog and heart highlights a friendship as opposed to a love relationship so this can come in contrast with the ring. So if we had the ring, I'm not going to pull it out, but if we had the ring with the dog, it would suggest a love relationship that is coming out of a friendship, whereas the heart and dog suggests that this is just a friendship. I know some authors do not read this in this way. I've even come across authors that read the dog and heart as a partnership for life, you know, something really deep and a committed love relationship. Personally, I don't read it this way. I prefer to have a distinction between a relationship that leads to a love relationship versus a relationship that is just a friend. Because in love readings, this difference is important. So I prefer to have that distinction. And I bring that distinction through the dog and heart. Now, obviously with a really bright card like the clover, it is a very clear message that you are better off keeping this relationship a friendship and not taking it to a further level. That is a very, very clear and specific meaning that comes through this triplet. And again, I don't think that the order of the cards really matters here. Maybe when the dog and heart are together, it emphasizes the idea of a friendship a bit more than if they were separated. But I still think that the overall meaning is, is clearly coming through here. And the clover really brings a lot of blessing. So this is a wonderful friendship, a very supportive relationship. No reason not to give back what this person uh, brings to us, to our friendship. It is, in general, a very supportive 
a triplet. But if this is specifically about a love reading, then the idea of keeping this relationship as a friendship, at least for the time being, or for the time horizon of the reading, is key and clearly comes through. So these are my thoughts for a whole bunch of triplets with the dog and clover. Let me know your thoughts about this. Leave me your feedback. Let me know how you like my interpretation or if you do anything uh, differently. And let me know if there are specific combinations that you want us to look into in our next combination videos. So thank you so much for tuning in, folks. I hope this was helpful. And until we meet again, take very good care of yourself. And thank you so much for watching.